Here's a house. Here's a door. Windows one, two, three, four. Ready to knock. Turn the lock. It's play school. Mm. Hello. Hello. Can you see? I'm peeling an orange. <laughs> but I wonder what, what's on our calendar today. May 15th. Oh, yes, and it's another Friday. And now here's our picture for the middle of May. Lambs are growing up. There's sunshine in the air. And round their tops, the cherry trees wear blossom in their hair. Thank you. Mm. I love oranges, don't you? Mm. I'm going to take a quarter. Mm. Mm. Oh, juicy. Oh, I've got a pip. So have I. You know, I've heard say that if you plant one of these, if you're very clever, you can grow an orange tree. Really? Shall we try that later? Mm. But first of all, we're going to sing a song. It's not about an orange, but it's about a cherry, isn't it? Well, Actually, it's about a cherry, a chicken, and a baby. Would you like me to tell you the words? They're quite interesting. I gave my love a cherry that had no stone. I gave my love a chicken that had no bone. I told my love a story that had no end. I gave my love a baby with no crying. How can there be a cherry that has no stone? How can there be a chicken that has no bone? How can there be a story that has no end? How can there be a baby that's no crying? Here are the answers. A cherry, when in blossom, it has no stone. A chicken, when a pipping, that's when it's in the egg. It has no bone. The story of my loving, it has no end. A baby, when it's sleeping, there's no crying. Here are the pictures. There's a cherry, a chicken, and a baby. I gave my love a cherry that had no stone. I gave my love a chicken that had no bone. I told my love a story that had no end. I gave my love a baby that's no cry. How can there be a cherry that has no stone? How can there be a chicken that has no bone? How can there be a story that has no end? How can there be a baby that's no A cherry when in blossom it has no stone A chicken when a pipping it has no bone The story of my loving it has no end A baby when it's sleeping there's no crying Did you like that song? We're going to sing it again. It's called a riddle song, because it's a bit of a puzzle until the answers come at the end. Did you see the picture at the end? 
of the heart with an arrow through it. Well, that means a heart full of loving. I gave my love a cherry that had no stone. I gave my love a chicken that had no bone. I told my love a story that had no end. I gave my love a baby that's no crying. How can there be a cherry that has no stone? How can there be a chicken that has no bone? How can there be a story that has no end? How can there be a baby that's no crying? A cherry when in blossom, it has no stone. A chicken when a pippin, it has no bone. The story of my lovin', it has no end. A baby when it's sleepin', there's no cryin'. Remember that orange I was eating? Well, there's one of the pips out of it. I'm going to plant it in a little pot and see if we can grow an orange tree. Because if I put it in the pot and give it plenty of water, well, in time, there'll be some pretty white flowers and they'll smell nice. And after that, if we're lucky, we'll get some oranges. So, I must find the little pot. Here's a little pot. And I'll put the pip in like that. It well in there like that. Cover it up. Now, I'd better put some water on. There. And now we hope that it'll grow into an orange tree. I wonder if I, if I tried a magic spell on it. That would make it work. Let me think of one now. I know. Abracadabra, hokele, hokele. Abracadabra, make my orange grow a day. Hokele, hokele, shh. That should do it. Well now, if I leave it there like that, I'll forget that there's an orange pip in there and I'll wonder what's in it. So I'd better put a little marker on it. Now, here we are. There's a marker. So I'll just cut it down here a bit because I've got a, a marvellous idea here. Now, I'll put that in there. And what I'm going to do now is cut an orange out of this cardboard here. Round. Round, round, and I'll put a little stalk on it, if I can. And there. There. I've got an orange. Can you see it? There, and later on, when it's growing, I'll know that that's an orange tree. I'll just put it in there like that. There. Now, when the orange tree has grown to about there, I'll take it out of the little pot and put it in the flower tub. No, no, no. It's not a flower, is it? It's a fruit, so I'd better put it in the fruit tub. There's the fruit tub. And in it, we have the strawberries. 
Brian planted. I wonder how they're getting on. Oh, yes, they're coming on beautiful. Lovely long runners coming off them. And there's a little white flower. Can you see it? Well, that's the start of a strawberry. And soon, when, when there are all strawberries all over, I'll come and nip in and eat them all up before Brian gets here. <laughs> Not really. I'll, I'll save him one or two. I'm looking forward to that. Now, what else have we got? Well, there's the, there's the flower tub. Here's the flower tub. Got a flower on it. And what have we got in here? Ah, yes, we planted four anemone seeds. There's only three of them come up. Look, one, two, three. Nothing's happened here, so that happens sometimes with plants. Sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't. But we're lucky we've got three anyway. And that's got a nice long stalk on it and some lovely green leaves. And when there's lots of green leaves, then after that, if we're lucky, there may be some flowers. And that's the anemones. Now then, what have we down here? The vegetable tub. And we've got a lovely row of lettuces. And they're coming along very nicely. Well, when they're grown, they'll be all right for George the rabbit. Make him a nice salad. I think it's time to water them, really. Because you've got to keep them watered, and then they won't die, because they get very, very thirsty. So here we are. And water the lettuces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight fine lettuces. There. Now the anemones. One, two, three. I'll put some there, and just in case he's a bit slow coming up. And now the strawberries. One, two, three, four, five, the one with the flower, and six, one in the middle, who's very thirsty. There. And now, it's story time. And today's story is rather a funny one. David Kossoff's here to tell us all about it. But before we join him, let's have a look at the clock. I wonder what's round it today. These are glasses only to say hello in. I take them off to see you better. Ah, yes. There you are. Are you all right? Good. Imagine a little square house, quite small. There's a downstairs and an upstairs. Yeah, and upstairs it's got three bedrooms, and downstairs it's got a, a room to live in and a big kitchen. And in this house live three friends. One is a sausage. His name is Banga. And one is a needle. And this needle is so thin and long that there isn't room for two eyes, so he's only got one. And if you look at any needle, you'll see it's only got one eye. And the third friend was a lump of salt. Not a packet of salt that pours out easily, but a lump of salt. That's the other kind that your mummy uses for cooking. And there they lived quite happily. And they ate once a day. And they always ate the same thing, soup, because they liked it. And they took it in turns to make it. First sausage, and then needle, and then lump. 
or salt, or lumpy salt, or salty lump. You can call him what you like, doesn't matter. And you know a funny thing. When needle made the soup, or salt made the soup, it, well, it was all right, but nobody ever had more than one helping. But when sausage made the soup, Banger's soup was wonderful, delicious. And they had two helpings, sometimes three, even four helpings. Well, Needle, one day, said to himself, I'm puzzled. I really must find out. Why is it that when the sausage makes the soup, it's so delicious, and when I make it, it tastes just like hot water? So he waited until sausage went into the kitchen, and then Needle, put his one eye to the keyhole and watched how Sausage did it. And he saw Sausage take a white apron and put it on and Needle said to himself, oh, well, I do that. And then he saw Sausage get three plates and three spoons and put them on the table and take the big saucepan and fill it with water and put it on the stove. And Needle said, oh, well, I do all that. That's nothing very clever. And then he stayed looking and he saw an astonishing thing because when the water was boiling, Sausage took off his white apron, jumped up on the stove and jumped into the saucepan and swam around for a few minutes. Then got out, dried himself on the white apron, stood there. Then he rang the little bell to call his two friends and they came down and they had the soup and it was, as usual, delicious and they had two helpings three in fact when it was needle's turn he did all those things looked around took off his apron jumped into the soup lay there for a little while got out dried himself wiped the water out of his one eye rang the bell and they all came down for supper and when they tasted the soup Poor salt. She said, whoa, 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 what have you done? What, it, it, it's dreadful. It tastes of old pins and uh, pen nibs. It's dreadful. What have you done? And Sausage, who was rather polite, didn't say quite as much, but nearly as much. And poor Needle felt very bad. He said, well, it's, the plan went wrong. I'm very sorry. And he took the rest of the soup and threw it away. Now, Salt also looked through the keyhole next time and also saw how Sausage had done it, and she decided to do the same. So when it was her turn, she got everything ready, three plates, three spoons, saucepan full of water on the stove, set it to boil. When it was hot, in she jumped. Didn't stay in too long because it was rather hot. When she got out, she noticed a strange thing. She was a bit thinner. She rang the bell. Two friends walked in. They said, oh, oh, said Needle. You, you, you've gone all slim. Oh, dear. And Sausage said, oh, I think I rather like you like that. You look, well, I think it suits you to be a little bit thinner. You were, let's face it, a bit lumpy. And they had their supper. It was undrinkable. It was so salty, they made terrible faces, dreadful faces. Sausage said, I, I, I can't eat it. And Needle said, it's absolutely dreadful. And then poor Salt confessed what she'd done. And Sausage was rather cross. He said, I know I make the best soup, and that's why I made you promise not to watch me and you've both stolen my secrets, and you, you just can't do it as well. Now, you must promise me you won't do it anymore. Now, listen, Needle. said, if you jump in the hot water, you'll just get brown and nasty. And we'll have to call you nasty names like Old Rusty and things like that. And as for you, Salt, he said, if you jump in once more, you'll just disappear. Now, don't be so silly. 
and they promised and they went back to as it was before. Twice out of three times the soup tasted just like hot water but on the day that sausage made it it was delicious and on that day they had two helpings sometimes three sometimes even four Sausage. Hello, salt. Hello, needle. Would you like to do a dance? We have some music for you. Crumbs are coming out. Oh. Oh. There. Did you like that dance? Salt and sausage made soup. 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 Can you say that? Very quickly and very quietly. Ready? Salt and sausage made soup. 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 chosen that magic window today but on Fridays you know we always go and visit a school and see what other children are doing you coming come on then through this window <laughs> there's a boy arriving at school with his mother his name is Jonathan. As he passes the school window, he sees some of his friends waiting for him inside. This is where all the children hang up their hats and coats. All the boys and girls have their own pegs 
and each peg has a different picture beside it. In school, you have your own bag to keep things in. There's a special place for your comb. You have your own cup and a face flannel, and all these things have the same picture on them, so that you'll know which is yours. School's got everything, just like at home. Oh, that's a good wash. Boots to put on when it's wet or muddy. Jonathan's mother is helping him put his boots on. I wonder where he's going. His mother is going off to do the shopping and clean the house. She'll call back when he's finished school for the day. But until then, there's a big garden and lots of other children for him to play with. Did you like that, Phil? I liked the bit where Jonathan came to school and his friends waved to him through the window. And there was that shot of the little boy with his nose pressed up against the pane. And I liked the pegs with the pictures on top. You'd be able to know which was your peg, wouldn't you? Well, as you can see, I have a lot of flower pots on this table here. Some big, some small. And this one is our magic flower pot. Gordon found a seed and he planted it in this pot, and a feather grew. So it must have been a magic pot. Shall we have a closer look at it? Yes, there's the feather. And it looks an ordinary sort of feather to me. Hey, what's happening? What's happening? Feather anymore. Hello, hello, hello. It's a flag. Now, oh, what's what's that? It's a flag. Yes. That's not the magic pot, is it? Yes, it is, and the feather's changed into a flag. Well, I started something when I did that, didn't I? When I planted that seed. Now, what have we had? We've had a, a feather mm. and now a flag. Mm. I wonder what it will turn into next week. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Oh, look. There's the mustard and cress. Yes, that was planted two weeks ago. It has, gr it has grown, grown hasn't quickly. it? I should think in another week, when it's up to about there, mm. it'll be ready for George to have with his salad. Well, That'll be nice, that. won't it? <laughs> oh, I'll just put some more water on it yes. there, just to make sure. Yes. There we are. Well, it's time for us to go now, so goodbye from us until it's time for us to be with you again. Goodbye. Now, would yes? you help me stack these into the shape of a pyramid? Oh, I'd rather do it in a tower. Oh. Yes, let's... Do it right in a then. tower. 